in uh, exchange for other people, you think you could do it better, and then you start it. And was it first started for the Chinese market, or was it first charged international? How did you do the marketing and the sales guy? How did you get the first 10,000 people to enjoy your product? Yeah, so when we first started, we, wanted to, we always wanted to do an international exchange. And uh, um, when we were doing the ICO, we had a grand plan of doing a world tour, you know, Shanghai, New York, uh, San Francisco, uh, Europe, oh. and et cetera. Um, but what happened is um, when you plan two weeks for the ICO, uh, if you take a world tour like that, it takes, you know, each flight takes like 10, 18 hours out of, out of your schedule. We yeah. just couldn't do that. Um, so we actually ended up taking zero flights. Um, and uh, <clears throat> I took a train from Shanghai to Beijing uh, that takes about three or four hours, but you still have connectivity, and then back on the same day. Um, that, was, that, was, that was the extent. So uh, even though we had our English white paper, most of our initial users were from China. Um, but thanks to the blockchain technology, um, we have a website that, you know, that we were crypto to crypto exchange. So anybody can deposit crypto using any blockchain, we scroll using any blockchain, that was it. Um, our website was available in four languages at that time, but our website didn't require a lot of language. Uh, there's a green button and there's a red button, and everything <laughs> else is words. So um, it, uh, the international users didn't have a lot of uh, difficulty using that website. So we actually got users from day one from 180 80 different countries. And then we're like, wait a second, uh, if we have users in 180 different countries, we should have our team in 180 different countries. Mm. And then um, luckily or unluckily, the Chinese government kicked us out, kicked us out um, six, six weeks after we started. Um, really? So by September 4th, 2017, uh, they said no, no, no crypto exchanges in China. How, how does that work? You get a phone call or just get disconnected? I mean, how did the Chinese government communicate with you? Um, they just publish a memo, uh, so it's like you know, it's not. It's, we're not even sure if it's legally binding or anything. This is just a memo published by like seven departments in China, um, and says they do not. They I don't forgot the wording, but some vague wording. But you you, you interpret that they don't want uh, crypto exchanges in China. They don't want people to do ICOs in China. Um, message was very clear and. Um, uh, actually, some of our peer exchanges got, got a call from the government and said, you got to shut down. Uh, at the time, luckily, we were, we were a six-week uh, old startup. So we were, we were, at the time, we were small. Um, we just said, let's pack up and go to, go to someplace else. And yeah. we, had, we had 30 people at the time. And, just, well, we just, and all of them are fairly uh, startup young guys. Yeah. That, no that, family, that kind of stuff. Some people had some family, but yeah, it was mostly no family. Some but, family, yeah. yeah. OK, yeah. Right. Very easy to move, so we just moved. Uh, we just moved everybody out. Um, that was that. So you're used to tough regulators. Memo: Get out of the country. Okay. Uh -huh. And then where did you go? Uh, so our team actually split up. Uh, I went to Japan first because I lived in Tokyo for a number of years before that. Um, and then in October 2017, the Japanese regulators started to uh, register the exchanges. So uh, that was the first. That was the earliest of any exchange uh, licensing. Mm -hmm. Um, so we thought, well, that was, that was pretty good. And er, actually, in April 2017, earlier, six months earlier that year, uh, Japan le uh, recognized Bitcoin as a legal currency. Yeah. Um, so that's the first in the, in the world. So, and, um, so we thought that was a very po uh, positive environment. But after we went to Japan, we found the um, registrations are very strict requirements, uh, well, strict uh, limitations. They limit up to the number of coins you can list on a crypto exchange to about 20 coins. And even over the last four years, uh, <laughs> at the time, we had 100 coins. So we're like, um, it doesn't, doesn't work for our business model. Um, so then I, I, um, I left.